Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at how to set up and work with a MoTeC LTC CAN Lambda module and integrate that to our MoTeC M1. So we're going to have an exhaust Lambda broadcast reading here so we can use that for tuning and calibrating. Now we're gonna find on MoTeC specific firmware packages, I'm using a GPRP package for my M150, we need to only worry about and use a MoTeC specific wideband device. That could be an LTC or a PLM for MoTeC. If you're running a third party firmware package such as John Reed, you're able to integrate something like an AEM wideband. So it gives you some more options in terms of setup configuration for integrating a wideband on those third party packages. But for my situation, I have to use the MoTeC LTC, which is going to be supporting a Bosch LSU 4.9 sensor. And that's uh, the, the easiest and cheapest option I have for getting an exhaust lambda reading for my, my MoTeC M1 here with this package for MoTeC. So let's jump in here and take a look at where we're gonna find our Lambda setup area and then talk about the details associated to that. We will be taking a look in this training module at also working with the LTC manager software, that's Motex additional software that we can go in and configure some things like our CAN address as well as our bus speed, the CAN bus speed that it broadcasts on because you may need to go and configure things. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Let's go in here and move from our field tuning page and let's go in our drop down here and go into setup. Now under setup, we're gonna move across here under our Lambda setup window. In here, we have a couple of details to configure. Now I've already set up and wired in my LTC to my MoTeC M150. I actually have three different CAN bus that I can work with. I have CAN bus one, two, and three on my M150. You may have less CAN bus options available on the lower tiered M1 box. Now in my case, I have wired my LTC module directly into my M150. I only have one LTC that I have to worry about. You may have multiple, so we'll talk about how to deal with that here in just a second. But in this case, I only have one LTC, and I need to make sure as I'm wiring in the CAN high and CAN low wire from the LTC into the M150, that I have a terminating resistor at the actual LTC module, and that needs to be a 100 ohm terminating resistor. So I've added the terminating resistor, and I've wired the CAN high, CAN low into the associated CAN bus one uh, CAN bus network on my MoTeC. And now I need to go ahead and first select here the bus speed that I'm going to be operating at and, con and, and communicating with the devices. So when we're looking at an LTC and we purchase it new from MoTeC, we'll find that the LTC module will have default settings in it and we can go ahead and just program everything around those default settings. We can change those settings. And that's what the LTC manager software is going to be for. And we'll talk about that here just again a little bit. But when we find we have a brand new LTC for MoTeC, that's a situation I'm in, it's going to have a default speed mode of one MBPS. So that's gonna be what we choose here. We can reconfigure it for different speeds on the CAN bus, but for right now, the default out of the box with the LTC with no changes to the LTC programming, it'll be that option right there. Let's go ahead and save it. Now the next thing we need to consider is if we have a inline four six cylinder engine or if we have a banked engine so v6 v8 v10 v12 or if we're wiring multiple widebands or having multiple widebands so having a wideband per cylinder for example and setting up our LTC modules so if we have let's just say a single wideband so a single LTC that was my situation I'm an inline four cylinder engine I have it mounted in the exhaust collector on my header so I don't need multiple sensors then it's pretty easy and straightforward to set up so an inline four, inline six cylinder engine, we would go here and we would go ahead and set it under exhaust lambda collector CAN bus. This is telling the MoTeC, it's just taking a look at a single sensor. However, if we're wiring, let's say two LTC modules and we have a banked engine and we wanna have an LTC wideband per bank. So we'll have two LTCs and we have a sensor per bank coming into each LTC module. We'll have to go ahead and select that on bank one, bank two. We'll actually designate this as bank specific so that the MoTeC can go in and trim and work with each bank. If we're wiring in multiple LTCs and multiple Lambda sensors and having a Lambda sensor per cylinder, for example, so in my four cylinder engine, I would have four LTC modules and then I would have four Lambda sensors fit it to each runner on the exhaust manifold. I would configure each LTC here under each option for the cylinder. 
make sure if you're doing a cylinder specific assignment that that LTC module is actually going to that specific cylinder. So cylinder one, two, three, four will be specific. We don't want to mix those up. Same idea as something like spark plug wires. You wouldn't want to mix those up. It cause all kinds of problems for us. So we can be very specific with this setting up our Ken Lambda sensor here. We want to make sure that we're going in and designating to the correct orientation. In my situation, I have just, again, a single LTC. I have an inline four cylinder engine. So obviously I'm taking the average of all the cylinders. So I'll go ahead and select this option here. So we're gonna grab our option CAN bus one. Now, we can see we have our exhaust lambda. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't wanna miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.